Good afternoon, everybody. I am your host, Renjani Rungan from Charm Health, joining you here for her Wednesday webinar series. Thank you for joining me here today. Uh, today's webinar topic is Boost Patient Experience with Real-Time Prescription Benefit and Electronic Prior Authorization, uh, presented here by Colin Renblom. And Colin, please correct me about how you pronounce your last name. From Yeah, Pittsburgh. it's, it's uh, yep, you're pretty close. It's Colin Renblom. Rimbled. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Uh, this topic is a really great value for those of you who use ERX or EPCS or are considering using this. Today, Colin will show the power of real-time prescription benefit and electronic prior authorization, and more importantly, how they work together to benefit you and your patients. Um, with these two tools, he will explain um, how the practice can automate prior authorizations, discuss prescription cost uh, with your patient, decrease, uh, decrease a staff workload, and improve the speed to therapy and adherence for patients. A uh, quick note for all of you, uh, the webinar is recorded and will be available for later viewing. Um, and Colin, thank you again for joining us. Uh, a bit about you. Uh, Colin's focus in his current role is on educating and articulating the value proposition and technical details around SureScript products and services across all market segments. Colin has been with SureScripts for eight years, supporting health technology vendors, health systems pharmacies, pharmacy benefit managers, health plans, and more, utilizing products on SureScripts network. For the first five years of Colin's time at SureScripts, he managed relationships with health technology vendors. As a part of the account management team, Colin has previous experience at support and implementation for health technology vendors, having worked in the ambulatory software division of a large integrated acute ambulatory EHR vendor. Um, in addition to Colin, we have a Charm team member, Justin Scherer here, um, our amazing sales engineer to answer your Charm related questions. Also on chat, we have Dili Ganesh waiting to answer your Charm related questions um, on chat. So um, without further ado, um, I'd like to pass on uh, the torch to Colin. Um, and for our attendees, uh, please feel free to ask your questions in the Q&A section, and they'll be answered during the webinar. This webinar will be approximately 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, we'll also take some time to answer your questions in the end. Um, thank you so much. OK, Colin, over to you. Great. Well, thank you so much for the uh, introduction. And it's great to be here speaking in front of the, uh, the Charm Health audience. Um, as mentioned, today is really going to be a discussion around e-prescribing, real-time prescription benefit, prior authorization. But really, the bigger picture is how are we going about making those processes easier through digitizing that prescription benefit information, getting more information, more insights, more, more tools, really at the exposure and the uh, user level to make that a more transparent process. So when we talk about electronic prescribing and you know virtually uh, prescribing in general, that is a pretty complicated topic. Um, Charm has been e-prescribing for um, the past several years. You know we have patient prescriptions going across the SureScripts network coming from providers and offices using Charm all the time. But those prescriptions are are really you know not as valuable unless the patients are actually filling those prescriptions and taking those medications. Now this slide admittedly has a lot going on in that process from the point that the patient arrives at the clinic to the point that the patient goes to the pharmacy, ultimately has that medication dispensed. There's a lot of opportunity for that path to really be convoluted, to have some hiccups or some steps in that process that aren't quite connected. And really what we're trying to do is streamline that equation, make it easier so that when you are prescribing medications, those patients are actively filling those medications, taking those medications, and avoiding some of those pain points that can exist along that process. So one of the tools that we're adding into that workflow to give you more transparency, more information at your fingertips within Charm is something called real-time prescription benefit. Now, many times the medications that you're going to prescribe may simply put require a prior authorization. There's no way around that. And so in those situations, we also have an electronic tool to help manage those prior authorization scenarios. What we're ultimately trying to strive for again is helping that patient along that path, helping your providers, your clinicians, so that those medications they're prescribing are actually going to impact the patient on the uh, medical journey that they're on. 
So the first really step in that process uh, before we actually e-prescribe any medications is to start looking at the member or patient's prescription benefit coverage. Uh, many times that prescription benefit coverage, the restrictions, the coverage factors will inherently impact which medications you should be choosing for that patient, how they're gonna go about filling those medications, and quite honestly, how quickly they can start taking those drug therapies. So before we get into that, you know, the name real-time prescription benefit may be somewhat new. So just a little bit of a question for discussion if you wanna put in the you know, Q&A. Have you ever heard of real-time prescription benefit? If this is not something you've heard of, you know, what, what do you know this service by? What kind of price or transparency options have you heard of uh, to really help get you and your clinicians, your team, uh, insights into those medications that that patient is eligible for? Um, while maybe some uh, audience members are typing in, I'll say that we uh, used to call this service from SureScripts a uh, patient medication benefit check, a PMBC. Um, some organizations that I work with also refer to this as a real-time pharmacy benefit, and those names would also really kind of fall under the same banner, but what we're naming our service today is real-time prescription benefit. So if you've heard of any of those other names or kind of monikers, um, those are also likely to be indicative of, you know, something that's going to provide patient coverage and cost information into your e-prescribing tools. So I don't know if there's any Q&A or, or questions or other responses, uh, but before we go on, I'll just kind of pause there for a quick minute. And then uh, for the charm team, if there are any interesting names or if audience members are saying yes, something they've heard of, I guess that's a, that's a really positive note. Colin, I can just launch a poll. I can just ask the question, have you heard of RTPB if you'd like? Yeah, certainly. We can get an idea how many of us are familiar with it. And we do have some responses coming in. Interesting. Yeah, I'll share you the results of the poem. So this is going to be a very valuable webinar today. So I'm going to, we've got two more people who need to vote. We'll just give them a chance and Go ahead and end the poll right now and I'll share the results. So there you go, if you can see it, Colin. Yeah, it looks like about 29% um, of the audience have heard of real-time prescription benefit. Uh, the other 71% have not. So the vast majority of you have not heard of the service or maybe some of the other uh, acronyms that I, I rattled off. And so this will really be um, hopefully informative to you uh, to kind of explain what that service is and provide you know the value on, on how that fits into your workflow. So. Thank you, for, uh, Ron Johnny. Sure. So as I move on, uh, real-time prescription benefit, that price transparency, you know, this is something that is not just a nice feature to have. Uh, when we talk about prescribing drugs, getting patients onto those therapies, um, this is something that time and again has proven that providers want. They want more information as opposed to less information. Uh, it helps them make their prescription uh, decision supports uh, easier, those choices that they have to cope with when they're seeing patients. Uh, the cost of the medication is a very important factor, but they know that prescribing drugs that are on the patient's uh, prescription benefit coverage will inherently increase the rate that those patients pick up those meds. Um, knowing which drugs are covered, which ones are not, you know, those are all factors that play into these decisions. And so as we talk about prescription price transparency and real-time prescription benefit, um, I'll certainly uh, talk about how uh, we cover some of those areas and how that data from that real-time prescription benefit service feeds into those decision uh, opportunities. So a, a quick look at how this service works or rather in lieu of real-time prescription benefit being invoked, uh, today in time, when your patients are coming in for their routine, you know, scheduled visits, when they're seeing their providers, their clinicians within CHARM, there's a series of transactions that take place to gather that patient or that member's prescription eligibility data, as well as their formulary coverage information. Now, this typically happens at about the point when the patient is checked in for their visit or shortly beforehand, that eligibility data is used to determine, to determine what coverage or what health plans that member is a part of. 
Now that really sits dormant in the application and charm until the provider goes in to actually start picking a medication or choosing a medication. You know, at that point, once they start looking for a medication, going into that drug lookup screen, uh, they will see some group and plan level formulary coverage. And that group and plan level formulary coverage is really helpful. Uh, I like to think of that as almost like the guardrails for the prescribers on what the health plan will and will not cover. But it's not member specific. It doesn't get to the patient or member coverage level. It doesn't take into consideration age or gender. It really just considers the health plan and what the health plan will or will not cover uh, for all of their members. Now, once the real-time prescription benefit service is turned on, using that same process, once the provider has selected the medication that they want to prescribe, they will also need to choose a pharmacy and put in a quantity and a number of days supply for that medication. Once really those four pieces of information are uh, selected, then we can kick off the real-time prescription benefit transaction. And as the name implies, it is a real-time transaction. Once those details are entered, such as the drug, the quantity, the day supply, the pharmacy, then the transaction takes all that information. It takes about two seconds. Uh, Charm will connect to SureScripts and it will retrieve that detail directly from the patient's health plan through their pharmacy benefit manager. Now within that two second long transaction, your providers, your users will be able to see exactly how much that medication will cost for that patient for that individual quantity, for that specific pharmacy. It's taking into consideration that member specific detail. It also looks at their out-of-pocket status, their coverage for the year. And it, at the same time, in that same two second long transaction, will also break down the cost of that medication if it's a better opportunity for the patient to go through different pharmacy channels. So example there would be if it's cheaper to go from a 30-day fill rate to a 90-day fill, fill rate, uh, you can see exactly what those costs will add up to for that patient. Now, additionally, at the same time, we will share alternative drugs and the costs associated to those alternative drugs. So that's a lot of information. We'll go into more detail on the next slide, kind of how that, that data is retrieved, how it's factored in, kind of what are the guard, guardrails around those fields. But really what this is giving you as a provider or a, an office is more access to that information, more specific detail around that patient or member. Obviously the cost is really great, but knowing where some of those opportunities are to save money or to potentially switch to an alternative medication helps you kind of rest assured knowing that you are getting the patient the best or most optimal prescription uh, for their um, encounter and healthcare event. So that real-time prescription benefit transaction has a lot of great data. As I mentioned, this is coming back directly uh, within about two seconds. As soon as the user selects that drug, they put in a quantity, a day supply, uh, have that pharmacy chosen. The really kind of specific details are coming in uh, really kind of four categories here. So coverage alerts are really important. Uh, as we talk about drugs that the member is eligible for, what prescriptions they can be prescribed based upon their health plan, this will factor in member specific details like their age. Uh, if you're trying to prescribe a quantity that's over a certain limit, it can tell you exactly what those limits are. Uh, the big thing here that I would outline is that it can also tell you in advance of prescribing a drug if that drug requires a prior authorization or not. So that prior authorization alert is really, really powerful because it allows you as a provider, as a user to tell the patient, hey, I'm gonna prescribe you this drug, but don't go to the pharmacy yet because we need to get that prior authorization resolved first. Now at the same time, you can see the price for the drug. You can also see that drug cost broken down across channel options. So if these are longer term medications that the patient's gonna be on, things like an insulin, a statin, something of that nature, if it's cheaper to move that patient from a 30 day fill every uh, once a month where they're picking it up 12 times a year, over to let's say a 90 day fill rate where they're getting that every three months, you know, picking it up four times a year, you can see exactly what the cost differential between those two options are. Now, some members will also have mail order or specialty pharmacy drug benefits. And in those situations, you can even see what a uh, corresponding mail order pharmacy would cost for that same prescription. Now, because we are getting these details directly from the health plan, uh, it's really important to call out that the data is really, really accurate. It's very timely. It's coming back in that two second window of time. 
But because we're getting this from the health plan, they can also tell us exactly what the out-of-pocket responsibility is for that patient and where their deductible is for the calendar year. So that's really cool detail to be able to share with your patient you know, as you're, as you're having that e-prescribing encounter kind of conversation saying, oh, it looks like you haven't met your deductible for the year. You, know, you have so many dollars left in your deductible, the drug is gonna cost you, you know, X amount of dollars. Now, all of this is really helpful information for those drugs that you're about to prescribe. And many times the drug that you're trying to prescribe may have a viable alternative that you want to consider as well. So even though you're selecting maybe a different drug, the health plan will actually send back up to five alternative drugs at the same time. The cost of those drugs will be shared. The uh, coverage alerts of those drugs will be shared. You'll even be able to see what the cost breakdown of those alternative drugs are, you know, for 30 day fill rates versus 90 day fill rates. So this is truly a lot of data, a lot of information that allows your providers, your clinicians to take into consideration and hopefully make the best, most economic drug uh, prescribing choice for those patients. Now, as a secondary benefit, what we have seen uh, is many times the drug that you're about to prescribe does require a prior authorization. We talked about how that comes through in those coverage alerts. If it's an alternative drug is available that does not require a prior authorization, that can also be an opportunity to maybe switch to one of those alternatives that's potentially lower cost and also avoids the prior authorization altogether. So many of our customers and health systems that are using this real-time prescription benefit service may have a slightly lower prior authorization volume overall uh, just by turning on this real-time prescription benefit service. So the value of real-time prescription benefit is something that I, I really can't stress enough. This is a uh, patient satisfaction uh, tool. This is a provider and user satisfaction tool. Uh, because you're already e-prescribing, because you're getting some of that group and plan level formulary information already, this really takes that to the next step, provides that clear and concise patient or member-specific benefit data uh, directly to you. Uh, it's coming back in a very short window of time, two seconds or less. It's gonna provide you that information, which is very reliable coming directly from the health plan through that patient's pharmacy benefit manager. Most of the health plans, most of the PBMs in the nation are already stood up and starting to use this service. What I would also emphasize is that this is a great tool to try to avoid some of the callbacks and some of the rework that you might inherently be doing today in time when a prescription has to be changed at the pharmacy. So it's never fun as a patient to go to the pharmacy to be told that your drug requires a prior authorization, that you can't pick it up that day. Uh, maybe it's a high cost drug and you just got you know, sticker shock when you went to the pharmacy. So this is a great tool to try to avoid some of those surprises at the pharmacy that your providers and your users are definitely dealing with uh, today in time in probably more of a manual fashion, such as phone calls or faxes that interrupt their workflow. Now we do have uh, Justin on the line from uh, the Charm Health team, and Justin is gonna stick around until the end of the presentation today. Uh, we do have a video to show how this new real-time prescription benefit service is integrated into uh, Charm Health. Uh, so I'm gonna keep talking here and go into the next phase about electronic prior authorization. Uh, but if you do, please stick around to the end of the webinar. We will certainly share that video and walk through um, how that service is integrated uh, directly within Charm. So real-time prescription benefit, uh, definitely a game-changing tool and service uh, for that electronic prescribing experience, uh, providing more data, more insights, uh, more pricing, cost consideration uh, opportunities than ever before. But as I mentioned many times, those drugs that you're about to prescribe, simply put, there's no way to avoid that prior authorization. Um, I've kind of affectionately said over the years that electronic prior authorization or rather prior authorizations in general are kind of a, a necessary evil in healthcare. Uh, nobody really enjoys prior authorizations, but they have to do those to get the uh, patients onto those drug therapies. And really the, the vast majority of the um, burden when it comes to prior authorizations is really associated to the time and the uh, unnecessary costs that are associated to those PAs or prior authorizations due to the manual nature, the time that's involved in getting those prior authorizations resolved. So the manual work is typically going to a you know, phone, uh, fax machine, uh, picking up a, a patient, um, you know, phone call or going to some kind of portal outside of Charm, you know, that is adding time and resources to a process that can be streamlined and expedited by moving it to an electronic opportunity. 
And so this is just a, uh, a more recent survey that showed kind of what some of those time savings opportunities were and actually what that time uh, uh, translated to in terms of cost. And the, the majority of that cost was actually on the provider or uh, practice side of things in getting those prior authorizations resolved. So when we move that from a manual workflow to an electronic workflow, um, that can have uh, a great impact on your, your clinics and practices. So here again, just another quick question for discussion. Uh, have any of you ever had a situation where you have a, a close contact, a patient, a friend, you know, maybe a family member, uh, had that experience where they go to the pharmacy, they try to pick up their drug, uh, only to find out then and there that that medication has a pending prior authorization and they can't leave with that drug, um, that uh, you know, they have to wait until that prior authorization is, is involved. So I'll pause here for a quick reaction. If again, you wanna use the Q&A or Ranjani, I don't know how quickly you can pull up a poll if that's more prefer preferable to uh, engage the audience. But I know in my role, I do run into this quite frequently. Um, where I hear stories, you know, patients, friends, you know, try to pick up a medication, you know, then they have kind of these horror stories where it's a couple days, maybe it's a couple weeks where they have to wait to get that prior authorization resolved before they can actually pick up those medications. So I would venture to say if you work in a clinic or a practice, this is fairly common. Um, Colin, do you want to run that question by again so I can type it up as a poll? Yep, it's uh, just any, any experience, yes or no, who has had a medication that they weren't able to pick up at the pharmacy due to a pending prior authorization? Okay, thank you. Just give me a second. We'll try. <laughs> And if it's easier, I can I can certainly move on. So this is really kind of a, again kind of a thought provoking question, you know, Absolutely. as we talk about yeah, prior I think authorizations. That would be a great idea when it when it shows up, it shows up. <laughs> so again, as I said, if you work in healthcare, if you uh, if you pay attention at all to kind of picking up prescriptions, I would venture to say that's a fairly common story where most, if not all, of you have an experience with somebody that you know that wasn't able to pick up a prescription due to that prior authorization. So what we are really doing is trying to put as much data and information uh, into your fingertips uh, or to your keyboards as, as much as possible so that you can make decisions and ultimately make use of charm uh, in ways that you may, might not have had otherwise through you know, electronic prior authorization. So what we really try to do is jumpstart that prior authorization process. Uh, instead of prescribing drugs, sending the patient over to the pharmacy, we can really kick off that workflow that we'll talk through today uh, using some electronic connections through SureScripts, uh, getting data directly from the health plans and the pharmacy benefit managers again. Um, they are in many situations set up for electronic responses where now you can see questions and question sets that the health plan needs in order to either approve or deny those prior authorizations. So this is a great opportunity to use your staff, use your resources, instead of phone calls and faxes at your clinic, try to move this into an electronic series of transactions within Charm uh, that allow you to connect directly with the patient's health plan and allow you to uh, interact really as, as diligently and quickly as possible uh, to get those prior authorizations resolved and get those patients over to the pharmacies to pick up their medications. Uh, it looks like uh, we do have that poll uh, pulled up here for the uh, question about the prior authorizations. If you know anybody that has ever been delayed picking up their prescription, um, it looks like virtually 100% so far are saying that the, uh, the answer to that question is, oh yeah, yes, I know somebody that has had that experience. Uh, hopefully I didn't taint the audience with my assumption that you've probably all had that, but again, that is a fairly common uh, uh, situation that I hear about today in time. So maybe I'll just give the audience a second to respond for that. There are your results. Right. So, yep. Just as as kind of thought, a hundred percent are saying yes. Uh, we know somebody or have had you know that experience of not being able to pick up a medication due to a prior authorization. So, 
great feedback there. And hopefully what that means is that this electronic prior authorization service will really be kind of hitting home with your uh, previous experiences. So really uh, kind of step one here in that electronic prior authorization process, we've kind of already talked through this. When you are using that real-time prescription benefit service, that will very accurately tell you when the medication that you're about to prescribe requires a prior authorization or a PA. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of times there's not alternatives. If it's a high cost drug, if it's a specialty drug, maybe it's a certain class of medications that don't have a lot of alternatives. It means that you are likely to have to go through that prior authorization process. Now, what we really do is strive to complete as many of these PAs prospectively as possible. And what that means is your providers, your staff who are ordering those drugs will simply go about their work as they would any other drug that does not require a PA, uh, but maybe tell the patient that there is a prior auth and that you're going to start working on that workflow. Now, alternatively, you can prescribe the drug, have it sent over to the pharmacy uh, without completing this next step that we're going to go through. Uh, but th that usually means that the pharmacy has to reach back out to you as a clinic to kind of retrospectively start that workflow or they have to use an R exchange transaction, uh, which I know is also available through Charm to kind of kick off that workflow after the fact. So from a prospective standpoint, your providers, your users will go ahead and order that medication as they would any other med that does not require a PA. What we really do after that is take a lot of that drug information, uh, take that eligibility data, we take the provider's NPI, um, that's all sent electronically across the SureScripts network in a prior authorization initiation transaction. Now that goes directly to the patient's health plan through their pharmacy benefit manager. And what they will actually respond back with is a question set that is going to match that patient and that health plan for that specific drug uh, that you're trying to prescribe. Now that question set comes back in about seven or eight seconds. It's a very quick transaction. And that should be displayed in the form of a task or a message on the work list, uh, which is a new feature for this electronic prior authorization service. So after your providers order those medications within just a few seconds, quite literally, you should see some messages appear on the work list, which is like a big to-do list for the prior authorization transactions. Now, the great thing that we found and from my experience is the providers are generally not the ones doing the question set, answering those Q and A's. Um, it's usually somebody within the clinic, some of the, maybe the pharmacy team or the, the nurses or the admin staff at your practices. And so this really works well for that type of scenario because as long as you have access to that work list, you can go in and click in those messages and begin taking care of some of those prior authorization questions. So that work list will really be kind of your to-do list, your outstanding prior authorization messages. And as soon as that medication is ordered within a few seconds, you'll see the responses coming back from the health plan, which indicate what steps need to be taken next to keep that prior authorization process moving. Now, upon clicking into those question sets or those messages from the work list, here is where you'll really begin to see the clinical nature the content that's coming back from the health plan about that particular drug and the prior authorization for that. Now these question sets are dynamic in nature. And so what you, what you should really see is that you're only gonna be spending your time answering clinical content here. Because we've already kicked off the prior authorization process electronically, the health plan already knows who the provider is, they know who the patient is, they know what the drug is. And so there's never a need to re-input that information or type in a whole bunch of demographic data. What you should really see in those question sets is a list of clinical content that the health plan needs uh, in order to either approve or deny the prior authorization. Now, the great thing about these question sets, it's kind of like taking an online multiple choice test. That's the way that I like to think about it, is it's going to present you with the question as well as a set of responses that are typically common for the health plan to see. So for instance, if this is a diabetic patient, if it's a diabetic drug, they might ask if it's a type 1 or type 2 diabetic. Uh, if it's a more complicated drug, like a rheumatoid arthritis medication, you know, maybe they'll ask what other kinds of drugs have been tried in the past. So as long as the end user has that data, that information, they can click through these question sets and it will only ask them the necessary questions based upon how you respond to those uh, preceding questions. So these questions will be um, very brief. And again, it will kind of depend on the drug that's being prescribed in the health plan, how many questions there are. 
Uh, but the great thing is that this is the, the most opportunity that you have to really cut out time and going in, you know, going to a payer website or searching for this information, um, you know, you won't be spending time answering forms or filling in patient demographic information, retyping in what the drug is, retyping in, you know, the patient's address, or the provider details, anything like that. So as soon as those prior authorizations uh, are submitted, um, that's really kind of how uh, you have the opportunity to respond back to the um, health plan on behalf of their uh, pharmacy benefit manager or the processor. Um, there's a lot of ways that we can kind of uh, involve or kind of streamline this process, as I mentioned, from more manual workflows for those prior authorizations. So using that electronic service, what we generally see is there are users within the clinic. It can be a provider, but it's typically somebody who has kind of that job as a staff member to complete these prior authorizations. Um, as I mentioned, you can also have, you know, staff that are either working in you know, multiple clinics, you can have front end staff, whoever's really responsible now for completing those prior authorizations in, in more of a manual format, you know, would likely be the best person to kind of delegate this uh, tool to so that they can com complete that step now within CHARM. Um, you have some opportunity to kind of uh, keep these messages on the work list. So you certainly don't have to uh, start uh, prior authorization completed all at once. Although do, do keep in mind that the sooner you complete these prior authorizations, the more likely it is that the patient can start taking that drug therapy. Um, the last thing that I'll say here is that we are communicating here again directly with the health plan with the pharmacy benefit manager. So as soon, as soon as those completed question sets are uh, answered, now your responses are being shared directly with the health plan, who is ultimately the ones uh, that are going to approve or deny those prior authorization requests. Speaking of approval and denials, uh, once those uh, completed question sets are returned, uh, the prior authorization will be uh, sent back to you uh, on that same work list with a status to indicate uh, whether that prior authorization was approved, uh, whether it was denied, or uh, something that's relatively new within the last few months here, uh, health plans can also do a partially denied uh, uh, prior authorization response. So partially denied typically means that the health plan uh, couldn't approve the PA completely for one reason or another. You know, an example of that would be maybe that you submitted for a quantity of 30, but they can only approve a, a quantity of 15. That might be an example of a partial denial. But the great thing is those responses are coming back to that same work list. So here again, if you have staff that are ded dedicated to watch this work list, to see those messages coming in, to kind of inform patients when their prior authorizations are complete, uh, you'll be able to see all those approvals, all those denials, uh, and those also partial denial uh, responses coming back. So what this really means is then kind of that, that next step takes place. And uh, obviously prior authorizations are kind of one part in the uh, prescription dispensing process. Uh, if you do receive an approved response, uh, typically what that means is the patient should be able to go over to the pharmacy to go pick up that medication and start taking that drug. And when the pharmacy submits a claim for that prescription, they will know that your prior authorization has already been on file with the health plan. Now, sometimes we do get a denial or that partial denial, and that means that maybe a change needs to happen to the prescription or you need to go through some kind of appeal process. Uh, and either way, this service will electronically tell you that that denial was received and give you some uh, example next steps to take, uh, depending on that clinical situation for that drug. So because these messages are being processed electronically, because we're cutting out a lot of that wait time by connecting you directly to the health plan through the pharmacy benefit managers, uh, we have some great examples where health systems are cutting out you know, hours or realistically days from that prior authorization wait time. We have some great metrics that show that patients are much more likely to be adherent to their medications when these prior authorizations are approved more quickly uh, than going through phone calls and faxes and manual workflows. And so this again is really kind of taking those necessary evils, those prior authorizations and uh, moving it to a more streamlined process uh, that will save you time and energy in getting those PAs resolved. Now, everything that we've talked about today is now available through uh, CHARM. So that real-time prescription benefit service that we really kicked off, um, that's a great opportunity to get more data, more insights from that patient's health plan through their pharmacy benefit manager. 
Um, that can certainly streamline your prescribing and your workflow process so that your users can have more time. Uh, they can avoid some of those phone calls and faxes after they prescribe drugs, trying to change those medications for one reason or another. Uh, and that prior authorization service is really invaluable uh, as we talk about time savings, um, eliminating you having to go hunt and find a form or a portal or a website for that particular health plan, uh, really eliminating a lot of those delays in that prior authorization workflow. And with that, um, Ranjani, uh, Justin, I will turn it back over to you. Great, thank you so much, uh, Colin, for that uh, detailed presentation. Uh, Justin from Charm Health will now uh, take over the uh, screen share and share a quick demo of, um, of how um, RTBB works um, in, uh, within Charm, as well as, um, and J Justin, if you can confirm that you're able to share your screen, and yeah, as definitely. Well as he'll, he'll go over how to um, get started with ERX and EPCS within Charm as well. It really yeah, so uh, my name is Justin. I work here at Charm Health. Um, I think it might be just best to kind of go over um, where you can enable uh, ERX for your practice uh, first, and then we'll go ahead and show the video on the uh, uh, RTPB. Um, but again, we're all familiar with the uh, Charm home screen. So in order to kind of enable ERX, you'll simply just come to our add-ons button here. It's a little plug in the um, <clears throat> bottom right of the page. Uh, here you'll see all our add-ons and integrations. And again, you can see ERX and EPCS. You'll go ahead and just select enable now. Um, and then if you, you know, this is where you can, you know, either click EPCS or ERX. The only real difference between these two, um, other than their prices, would be that ERX is simply for non-controlled substances, uh, and EPCS is for both controlled substances and non-controlled. Um, both have two different uh, setups. Um, ERX being that you'll um, fill out your enable uh, your enrollment form, as well as at your state license and your uh, your photo ID. Um, once that's been confirmed, we will then uh, go through the verification process with Experian. Um, and then once that is uh, everything goes through, uh, we'll enable it on the back end. You'll be able to prescribe within Charm. EPCS is a little different. Um, you'll select this little here button. Uh, you'll let us know that you're interested in it. We will then enable the subscription page, which you can then pay for the subscription and go through the, in, uh, uh, the ID proofing process. Once that's been completed, uh, we will enable it on the back end. You'll be able to prescribe medicine. Um, so now I'll go ahead and show the video for patient specific medication cost RX flow within uh, Charm. And then I'll take any specific Charm specific questions if anyone has that as well. Charm Health is happy to announce the integration of SureScript's real time prescription benefits feature into the e prescription workflow. Now medication pricing is readily available within your normal prescription workflow. Once you decide on a medication for your patient and select a pharmacy, you will be presented with clinically relevant therapeutic alternatives based on patient's benefits and whether prior authorization is required. RTPV workflow goes like this. Physician selects medication and pharmacy in Charm EHR. Charm EHR sends a request for real-time patient-specific benefits and cost benefits. SureScripts returns price and coverage information and alternative medicines. Lastly, physician can discuss with the patient and choose optimal prescription. Let us walk you through the RTPB workflow in Charm Health. Patient A comes to your office for a visit. An encounter is open for patient A. Prescriber moves to the recommendation section to prescribe drugs. Patient benefits can be viewed here using the drug eligibility link. Benefits details are pulled from PBMs through SureScripts. Prescriber starts writing a prescription for patient. An appropriate drug is searched for and prescribed. Now, eligibility details of the drug are shown. Note that eligibility details and medication pricing will only be shown for patients with prescription benefit plan coverage and if the benefit plan is part of the SureScripts Network Alliance participant. Formulary status, copay, and coverage details are shown. Prior authorization requirement is displayed in the coverage section if available. Alternatives will be displayed along with associated formulary, copay, and coverage details. Prescriber can compare and choose the alternatives as needed. Once eligibility details have been reviewed, prescriber will be taken to the prescription section 
where they need to fill out and take details, quantity, and days of supply. After a pharmacy is chosen, medication pricing information will be directly pulled from the patient's benefit plan. The patient's out-of-pocket prescription cost is then returned along with therapeutic or payer alternatives, usually within one to two seconds. Coverage information for alternatives will also be displayed along with this info. Prescriber can discuss with the patient medication costs and alternative medications that would work well and cost less. Flags for prior authorization and step therapy alert the prescriber to any requirements that might stand in the way of filling out the prescription. The prescriber and patient make a choice together and patient leaves the practice confident that they'll receive their medication at a price they can afford. The prescriber can now go ahead and transmit this prescription to the pharmacy. Since this is a controlled substance, it has to be marked ready to sign and needs digital signing with two-factor authentication to be e-prescribed. After signing, the prescription is sent electronically to the pharmacy. Status of transmitted prescriptions will be changed to e-prescription sent. Powered by ShareScripts, the real-time prescription benefit feature helps patients save money, improves medication adherence, and reduces pharmacy callbacks due to patient sticker shock. If you are not seeing the medication pricing option in your prescription workflow, this feature has not been enabled for your account. Please reach us at support at charmhealth.com to enable this feature. Thank you for watching this video. Yeah, so if anybody wants to um, ask a question live, please go ahead and I'll just give you the permission to, um, you know, we'll just give the allow to talk, press the allow to talk button. Um, you can just actually either send me a chat message or um, put it in the Q&A. I know many people did ask uh, questions and they were uh, resolved in the Q&A. And you always have support at charmhealth.com to finally, if you have something that comes up later on, you always have that as an option. Ah, now we do have a question from Now Health. Um, how does a user access the work list? Uh, like a medical assistant, not a provider. And what is the feature cost? This has been asked before, so I think that this probably needs to be addressed, Justin, as well. Yeah, I think the cost is just part of your, um, it's just part of the cost of ERX or EPCS. It's part of the feature itself. So well, if it isn't, in, yeah, so um, it's just part of the feature. Um, again, you just, it's just simply an add-on to our base platform. Um, so it just come, kind of comes with it. Um, and then as for user access work list, um, typically you can kind of give any permissions to whichever user within their roles. So again, within your settings and then go into, um, you'll see roles under facility. As long as they have the certain permission, they'll be able to have access to that work list. I have a question. Is there a way that we can upload our own like health questionnaires up to charm? So if our, our patients are turning in, like let's say a hard copy or emailed copy of their health questionnaire, is there a way to upload those? onto the charm system. yeah absolutely um you'll always be able to upload any sort of document to the patient specific document section um if you kind of it might be easier just to kind of show you um but each patient has their specific document so say i were to search any patient mm -hmm. and then come into their dashboard uh you'll be able to simply upload uh to their document section here and then you'll see what you'll see is import and then it'll ask you from the local drive, or if you did have the scanner plug in, you'd be able to scan it as well. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. And I think this has been a really valuable presentation on EPA and also RTPB. I think this particular feature is gonna, uh, the healthcare is definitely gonna see a lot of positive impacts and ease the burden of the prior authorization process and ensure that the patients get their medications and adhere to it. So thank you so much, Colin. This is a very valuable presentation and um, glad that we were able to do it and this recording will be available later. And Justin, thank you so much for being there to answer all of our questions as well as Lily on chat as well. Um, appreciate all of your time in attending this webinar. Um, thank you so much and have a really wonderful Wednesday and the rest of your week.